Hello, hello guys. Welcome to HYD. Remember, HYD is a team service here at Bototo Church where we engage with you, encourage you, and empower you to become a world changer in your community for Jesus Christ. Now guys, before we go any further, welcome back from the weekend. I hope you guys actually danced to Lima Blaze and Pompey yesterday. Man, I saw some friends of mine bullying some really nice trucks. Otherwise, guys, welcome 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 and if it's your very first time watching hyd we're really glad to actually have you here today and kindly write to us moff.connect at potodochurch.com and if you're watching online tell all your friends and to come and watch and also tap the link and get in touch with us we want to know how you are doing otherwise guys if you're watching on air write to us at moff <laughs> watoto pages on on instagram facebook and tiktok you can do it shortly and tell us how your weekend was what you're up to how is your holiday and we'd like to really just connect with you and get to know you otherwise today we are still continuing to talk about the gospel each one reaching one and we're going to go for our youtube sense and we'll find out what you guys think about each one reaching one let's go Yes, hello guys. We're still on our YouTube Sense segment and we have a friend here who's going to give us a couple of uh, ideas about our questions today. Hello, what's your name? Uh, my name is Macklin. Macklin, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. So Macklin, when you're watching news, what is your favorite segment? For example, sports, entertainment, lifestyle, what's your favorite part of news? Um, when I'm watching the news, I'd like to watch the sports. Sports? So if you're a sports person, that's amazing. Sports person. Yeah, so does watching sports affect you as a person? Yes, it actually does. How? Um, let's say they bring someone from the sports, like let's say Cristiano Ronaldo, right? So they bring him and he like encourages us from there, like you can do more. So I'll also believe that I can be more than I am right now. Amazing. What about the gospel? The gospel is a type of news. How do you think it can affect someone's life? Well, the gospel can change people's lives. Like one who doesn't know the gospel, right? Mm, if you preach the gospel, they can change and start following Jesus and start being a good person. Yeah, so if they were bad and they were negative, they can be a positive, more person believing in Jesus Christ. So I have a question for all of you guys that are also watching and you. Uh, have you spread the gospel? Yes, I have actually. Oh, that's amazing. Have you spread the gospel? If you haven't, please do because spreading the gospel can actually affect someone's life for good. Otherwise, thank you very much. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Joshua Caleb, uh, for those two cents. That was simply amazing. Well, I'm really excited to be here uh, with you here on HYD. Hello, World Changers. It's such an excitement. Well, uh, we're just going to get straight into God's Word, and I would love for us to pray. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this time. I pray that even as I share your Word, that you take this Word, plant it deep in the hearts of your children, that their lives will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name we prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Well, I hope you're having a wonderful Sunday, and uh, I hope you remember the message we shared last Sunday as well, because we answered the question, what is the gospel? And today, we want to talk about the impact of the gospel. And uh, when you think about the impact of the gospel, I like to start with myself as an individual because I have not always been like this. Well, one day, one time in my life, I was such a wrong person, like, you know, uh, you wouldn't want to get to know me a little bit more if you really touched into my life. You really saw that there was something that was wrong. It was actually a scene that affected me. Uh, I remember a couple of uh, days when I was in high school, uh, this particular one, we were in the library reading and one of my friends was actually stayed back in the dormitory just doing their own business and they got into a fight and uh, when they got into a fight I actually thought to myself hmm who has beaten up our friend and uh, we actually rest towards the dormitory to be able to lynch and beat up the guy who had beaten up our friend we were that rough on the edges were really the kind of guys you do want to hang around with but guess what with all this happening in my life, what really changed me was actually the message of the gospel. God did a work in my life and actually changed my heart. 
Listen, without a heart change, there can never be any real transformation in the life of any individual. Actually, Canon J. John uh, makes a statement and he says, at the heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. And doctors can actually perform surgeries, you know, and help correct heart disease. They can actually provide medication or do heart transplants to just sort out the physical sickness of a heart. But listen, the spiritual sickness of the heart is actually sin, and only the gospel, only the power of God can actually transform the heart of a human being. And uh, this is what the scripture says in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 to 11. It says, the human heart is most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. What Jeremiah here is actually addressing is that there's a real problem in the heart of every man, and that's the problem of sin. Now listen, many things can be changed about an individual. Many things can be given to them. Maybe you're taken to school. Maybe you're educated and helped to be able to be better. But only the gospel can actually transform the heart of a human being. Let me tell you about a guy called Paul. And uh, Paul writes in Romans chapter 1 and verse 14 to 17, and this is what he says. He says, I am obligated to both Greeks and non-Greeks, to both the wise and foolish, and that is why I'm so eager to preach the gospel also to you in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it's written, the righteous will live by faith. Now, this is an amazing scripture, all right? And Paul is saying he's not ashamed of the gospel. He's not ashamed of telling people about the good news that Jesus says. But let's take a step back and watch Paul's life. First of all, Paul was not always a Christian. Paul was actually a persecutor of Christians. He was actually uh, the kind of guy who would get authority to actually step out and go and kill, imprison, arrest, and torture anyone who believed in Jesus. But now when you see Paul writing this, he's actually not ashamed of actually saying and declaring that Jesus saves, the good news about Jesus saving mankind. He's not ashamed of it. Why? Something must have happened to Paul. As a matter of fact, when you read the book of Acts, Paul encountered Jesus. When he encountered Jesus, he actually had a heart transformation. His heart turned from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. How was that possible? It is the power of God through the gospel that actually transformed his heart. Now, you may be listening to me and you're saying, hey, Pastor Philip, I'm a good person. I don't do the things, the crazy things other people do. But well, if you and I were to sit down and we could get your life, everything done in secret, played it on the screen, you would probably not want to watch with me because in the heart of mankind, there is deceit and there is sin. And only the gospel can actually bring about the transformation of the human heart. Why is this transformation very important and why am I talking about it? Even as we are talking about each one, reach one. What is your role? It's to share the gospel. Sometimes it's difficult for us to share the gospel because we are hung on to the fact that this person is actually not going to change or they're not going to give their life to Christ or they will reject me when I actually share this gospel. But it is not you who transforms the hearts of men. It's actually the power of God that brings transformation to the hearts of men. So what's your part? Your part is to share the gospel. And what's God's part? God's part is actually to transform the heart of a human being when they believe the word, when they believe the gospel, the message of the good news that Jesus actually saves. Now, this is very important. And simply put, the gospel transforms individual lives. I am, a I am, I am evidence that it actually does because my life was changed. When you read the scripture, Paul is actually one of the other examples that actually the, the gospel transforms lives. 
And it's important because when one life is transformed, it actually impacts their family. And as I speak right now, I know one of you who's watching, you know that you weren't such a great person before you gave your life to Jesus. But when you got to know Jesus, something has changed about you. And this is how much the gospel changes individuals. Think of a thief who gives his life to Jesus. He stops stealing. Think of a murderer like Paul. He stops murdering. Think of any person who's bent onto wickedness. When they encounter and when they are impacted by the gospel and they believe and have faith in Jesus, their life starts to change day in, day out. And that impact is actually very visible in their life in their family, but listen, changed hearts change communities. When your heart is totally transformed, all of a sudden the people around you start to benefit from the change in your life. As Watoto Church, one of our key sections in our vision is actually to bring healing to the cities and to the nations. But let me tell you something, Uganda will never be any different unless the hearts of the people in Uganda are actually changed. But when the gospel has impacted the communities, then change, real change, is going to come around. Well, you can think about your school, for example. Uh, you may be wondering, well, when are my friends ever going to change? The only thing that can change them is actually the power of God that comes through the gospel. Well, where will my community ever change? It is full of maybe drunk people or people who are just wrong. It is actually the power of the gospel that will transform their lives. So what am I telling you to do? Share freely. Share the gospel freely. It is not the burden on you to see the change in a person's heart. Sow the seed. Do your part. And then God will take the message you've shared with that person, plant it in their heart, and start the transformation because it's actually God who transforms the hearts of men. And as we do that, families will change. As we continue doing, sharing each one, rich one, and sharing the gospel, communities will will be changed. So one thing I would love for you to do this week, I want you to boldly step out. Identify one person that you see does not know who God is and actually does not know Jesus. And I want you to just pray about it, but take a bold step and share very simply what the gospel is, how Christ died and how he resurrected because he died for our sins and for those who believe in him will inherit eternal life. Just share simply about the gospel and pray for that person and leave them alone and see how God is going to work in their lives. The more you share, and if they're hungry enough, they'll keep asking questions, avail yourself to answer these questions. You don't know the impact the gospel is going to have on someone's life. All you have to do is share simply. And now you may be watching me today, and I'm talking about the impact of the gospel as it has done on my life. You may not actually know who Jesus is. Jesus is not the Lord of your life. Actually, at the center of the gospel is Jesus. It's actually Jesus who died for my sins and your sins. It's actually Jesus who rose from the grave, conquered death, and has guaranteed us eternal life. So you may be watching, and you don't know Jesus. This is what I want you to do. I want you to just pray this simple prayer with me. All right, so just close your eyes and just repeat after me. Say, so Lord Jesus, today I recognize that I am a sinner that needs a savior. Today I open up my heart and I accept you as my Lord and my savior. I confess with my mouth that I am born again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you very much. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, congratulations, you just gave your life to Christ and now you are born again. And we would love to help you to get to grow in your walk with Jesus. Please do write to us, moth.connect at watotochurch.com. We want to be able to pray with you, but also to give you a call and help you on this journey. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Don't forget to tell someone about Jesus today. Bye.
this song we have just been singing tells us that Christ is enough for us. I would like us to pray according to this song. Lord Jesus, we thank you. Come on, children. Let's pray to God. Father Lord, we thank you so much for today. Thank you, King of Glory, because you have enabled us to be here. And Father Lord Jesus Christ, as we continue with our service, may your Holy Spirit come and be in our midst. We love you, Jesus, for it's in Jesus' name. excited about today's lesson last week we began our series about the armor of God and it's me again Auntie Doreen and we are going to learn more about the armor of God and so last week we talked about the belt of truth and each of us was able to learn that we need to buckle on our belt of truth so let's continue today and we are going to learn something new but let me first read from the Bible and let's See, what are we going to learn about today? Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 13. Let's read it together. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness so today we are going to learn about the second piece of god's armor and it is the breastplate of righteousness wow look at it ah oh, man if you have that on your chest there's no arrow that can go through you now in the army the soldiers used to put it on to protect their heart their internal organs you know your stomach the things that are in here so that when you are shot at by a spear or an arrow it cannot go through and that is what the breastplate was for the army people but for us as believers when we go to war with the enemy and we said last week that our enemy is the devil 
when we are fighting against the devil, you need the breastplate of righteousness because it protects your heart. So what is righteousness? Righteousness is right standing with God. And how do we achieve that? When you gave your life to Jesus, Jesus came to live on the inside of you. And so the Holy Spirit lives in you. And because of that, when God looks at you, he doesn't see the sinner in you. No, 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 no. He looks at you and he sees Jesus because Jesus makes us right before God. That's why when the Bible says he is the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to God is through Jesus. So when you gave your life to Jesus, Jesus came to live on the inside of you. So this breastplate that we are putting on is right standing with God. And it's only when you have Jesus on the inside of you that he is able to do this. So when Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 6 verse, um, verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. That's what it's talking about the right standing with God. Because sometimes the devil can throw at you an arrow that says you are still a thief. Because sometimes as believers, those small things that we used to do before we gave our lives to Jesus can come back and you do it. And you know, you feel so bad, you feel so guilty that you lied. You feel so guilty that you stole something and the devil will come at you and say, ah, that's who you are, that's how you are. But you know what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter two, verse 10? It says, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good things that God planned before you were born, long ago. So as Christians, you have the ability, you have the ability to do good every day. And you know, because you have Jesus on the inside of you, he is our righteousness. He is the breastplate that we put on. Believe that you are able to do good every single day because that's who you are. You are a believer and you are able to do all these things. And you know what? Sometimes that's what the devil comes at us, but don't allow the devil to make you feel guilty to condemn you for the things that you have done. All you have to do is go back to God and say, Lord, I am sorry. I'm sorry for these things that I have done. And I, I ask you, Holy Spirit, to help me not to do these bad things. Maybe you've been watching bad pictures. You've been watching bad movies. Stop. Go back to God, ask for forgiveness, and stop doing it. That's the only way you will be able to stand when you put on the breastplate of righteousness, when you have given your life to Jesus, you have the ability to do good every day. And Ephesians, 2 Corinthians, we're going to read from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. It says, the old things that you used to do, the bad things that you used to do, Jesus took them away. And you became a new person. You are a new creation. And this new creation is the one that we are talking about, the one that has the breastplate of righteousness, the one that has the belt of truth. So all these things that we are talking about, that's the full armor of God. And once you have done that, you are able to stand against the lies of the enemy, against the lies of, of the devil himself, Satan, who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy you. But you, because you are a believer, because you have Jesus on the inside of you, you have that breastplate of righteousness and you are able to stand before the enemy and you can be able to tell him, no, 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 that's not who I am. I used to lie, but I'm not that kind of person anymore. I remember there was a time in uh, P4, I was, I think I was eight years old. Are there any eight year olds? Hello, eight-year-olds. Well, I was, at some point, I was an eight-year-old, and there was a science fair at school. I hope you guys love science. I used to love science. For those who don't love science, it's okay. It's okay. You will love science. So I had taken my mom's glasses to do this experiment. You know, air occupies space. I know you guys know this one. Those who are in P4, I know you know it. So I did the experiment, but somehow the glass broke, and the devil said, uh, don't tell mommy what has happened. Tell her that somebody else did it. 
But I chose not to do that because the Holy Spirit, remember when you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit enables you to do right because Jesus is on the inside of you. He is our breastplate of righteousness. He is the one who protects us from the evil one, telling us things that we need to do that are against God's plan for our lives. And so when mom came, I told her the truth. And guess what? I didn't get punished. Woohoo! No punishment. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. You know why? Because the Bible says the truth will set you free. And yes, I was free that day because I chose to do what is right. And it's only the Holy Spirit, Jesus on the inside of us, that breastplate of righteousness that we put on every day. That's the one that protects our hearts and minds from the devil who wants to destroy us every day. And maybe you're wondering, how about me, Auntie Doreen, who, has, who doesn't know Jesus? That means I do not have the breastplate of righteousness. You are very right. You do not have it yet. But I want to give you an opportunity today, before we close the service, that you will be able to give your life to Jesus. So everybody, let's bow our heads and let's pray with our friends so that they too can have the breastplate of righteousness. Let's close our eyes and repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart and take away my sin. Make me a child of God. May I have the breastplate of righteousness on me today. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, amen and amen. Congratulations, my friends. I'm so excited that you have given your life to Jesus. And guess what? Right now, you just got yourself the breastplate of righteousness, and you're able to stand against the lies and the devil who wants to strike you, who wants to strike your heart with lies, with deception, with condemnation, with guilt from the things that you used to do. You are a new creation. God has made you a new person. And my friends who already know Jesus, well, let's continue to love Jesus. Let's continue to believe that our God who has chosen us, who has called us, who has told us that we were created in him. From God's word we have read, we were created in him to do good things that he planned for us long ago. That means we have the ability to do right every day because we have Jesus on the inside of us. He is our breastplate of righteousness. So thank you for being part of our service today. I hope to see you next week as we learn more from God's word. And remember, everything that we are doing, every, every armor that we are putting on, we cannot do it without prayer. We need to pray every day. We need to read the word of God. We need to memorize it because that's what God wants from us. That's what God expects of us as believers. So God bless you and have a great week. Bye. Church, let's rise up unto our feet and let's praise yes. Jesus. Yes. Everyone, let's bounce together like this. Everyone, like this.